Good morning, good morning. Let us get ready to worship our Heavenly Father. Please come in and find a seat. As we give our attention to the Lord. You know, I love coming to a building where people love one another. Just a wonderful thing. We'll sing our first song. Sing and be happy. Let us sing. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem gray all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shine. <coughs> Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust in his promises, grand. Sing and be happy. Press on to the goal. Trust him who leaves you. He will keep your soul. Let all be faithful. Look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Often we are troubled and tired. Sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin. Blessed with earthly gain. Their courage we cannot tell. What tomorrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away. Then your heart truly can sing. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you. He will keep your soul. Let all be faithful. Look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Oh, we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems the fortune suffer, frown and pass us by. There are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust in each day, we shall have treasures unfold. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, trust him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Be happy today. Good morning, church family. Good to see everyone. God woke us up this morning. Sing and be happy. So, welcome. Good to see all of you. Uh, welcome visitors. Welcome those online. Um, this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us be thankful. Let us be thankful. And what's the reason for the season? Jesus. Jesus. All the flashing lights and all the decorations are nice, but Jesus is the reason for the season. Uh, so, let's remember that. Um, and if you have a phone, uh, make sure you have it on vibrate and welcome. Welcome. It's just good to be here. Glad you chose to come and worship. Good morning, church family. Good 
Oh, how I love you. Let us sing this song like we mean it. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing this word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. <laughs> Does he first love me? It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Does he, does he first love me? It tells of one who's loving
service which is giving and this is a time where all of us should be very well aware of 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 the joy and and the reason for the giving we've got so much work to do in in God's service and God just ask that we or, or should I say we we are commanded to give from the heart. And when we give from the heart, it should be with so much joy. We shouldn't be giving grudgingly. We should be giving with a smile on our face and joy in our hearts because we know that the 
the gifts that we give, they will be multiplied tenfold. So as we do this, let us think about being in service and of service to our Lord and Savior and in just doing his work and in building his work. Let us bow. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Father, because you have been a mighty, mighty, mighty good God to us, Father. You have given us so many blessings, Father, and so many blessings, too numerous to count. But Father, we know that as we come back to just give a small portion of that back which you have given us, Father, we just pray that uh, we, you search our hearts and, and, and search the joy and look at the joy in our hearts as we give back. And, and Father, we just ask that you increase that joy in us, that, that we can even be more generous, Father. But we know that if we stick with you and that you continue, we continue to be guided by you, Father, that the joy and the love that we have for each other and for you will continue to grow. And Father, we thank you so much for the mercy and the grace that you continue to show us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. You see a Thompson? <laughs> we're going to sing just a little talk with Jesus but I'm going to do it like they do in the most of the black churches in Detroit just a little talk with Jesus let us sing 
I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love. <coughs> Just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry. We'll answer by and by. Feel a little prayerful yearning. Heart on the heaven is turning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my path seems drear without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. The mist of sin may rise and hide the starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. Feel a little prayerful yearning. Heart in heaven is turning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my heart be filled with tears. But this is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. Now just a little talk with Jesus makes it a right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. Feel a little prayer for yearning. Heart on the heaven is turning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. He'll make it all right. All right. All right. All right. Now just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. He'll make it all right. All right, all right, all right. Now just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Amen. Thank you, Brother Melvin. Appreciate you leading there. Uh, good morning, everybody. We're, we have a good group on Facebook. The, Facebook this morning. We have a lot of people out of town, a lot of people at home that couldn't be here this morning. And so we, are, we have a good crowd on Facebook. And I apologize that our audio was not working. We didn't realize it wasn't working, but you people on Facebook let us know. And as soon as we found out, our genius crack uh, technology team got right on it and it's working now. But uh, you guys missed some good singing online earlier in the worship. But we, we're glad we got it all fixed and that you're able to join us online today. But we're also glad that everyone's here today. We, we got to experience a great lesson God gave us right here, right? We should all be like one of those. If you want to enter heaven, God says that's what you got to be like. And that man was excited, and we hope that you're excited to be here. Uh, how, many, how many of you older people, every time I say, you need to get up and do something, oh, I'm not getting up there. What a great lesson for us this morning. A young man excited to be up here. Had to be dragged off here. I think some of you wish I'd be dragged off here sometimes, but but we're uh, we're what a great lesson for us this morning that we had. We are we are looking at the ten questions that matter to us most from Jesus. We know that Jesus asked several questions. Uh, 
in the in the book uh, in his word. And each question, very rarely did Jesus ever that I know of, Jesus asked the question he didn't know the answer to. It's not like he was asking these questions because he wanted the information. He every time Jesus asked a question, it was for us to hear and to evaluate and to do some introspection for our own lives. And he would ask people questions and expect them to take it to heart and to ask and to evaluate yourself. And so that's what we're doing. We're taking, I think, the ten most important questions that Jesus has asked and look at them and say, how does that apply to us today? <coughs> and we look first at Matthew 16, 15 when it said, who do you say that I am? Then we looked in Matthew 21 when he said, do you believe? And he was talking about basically the context of prayer there. And then in 5, 1 through 15, John chapter 5, he said, do you want to get well? Do you really want the healing and all the responsibility that comes with that? Then in Matthew 8, 26, he said, why are you so afraid? And then in Matthew 14, 26, he said, why did you doubt? And we're looking at each one of these and what they meant. And then in Mark 20, 8, 21, he said, do you still not understand? John 6, 67 said, do you want to leave too? Well, do you? And do you want to leave and depart like the rest of them did? Now's your chance. Hit the road, Jack. That's what Jesus wanted us to evaluate. And then last week we looked at Luke 10, 36. And he said, which one of these is your neighbor challenging us to love everyone? Not just the easy ones, but to love. And so we've been looking at each one of these questions. And today we're going to be in Mark chapter 5. If you'll turn there. Uh, we want to look at a very important question that Jesus asks today in Mark chapter 5. But I want to set up the context. I want you to know what's going on before we get into the actual passages of study this morning. Jesus had left the Gentile area, the Gentile region, where he healed the demon-possessed man. Remember that whole story where the legion, demon, the, the man was possessed by a legion of demons and and he was hiding in the catacombs, remember that? Well, this, that all occurred in a very Gentile region. And he did that. And he, he healed them, and it was time to escape there. And so he crossed the entire Sea of Galilee, and he's now landed back in the Jewish, uh, predominantly Jewish area. He's left the big-time Gentile area, came back to the Jewish region and the Jewish towns. And immediately, the, the Bible tells us, him he was practically still in the boat. I mean, you can imagine, the, the shore of the Sea of Galilee, it was a very busy place. They had markets, uh, you know, the, the fishermen, the people doing business, uh, people just hanging out, right? You want to go to the beach and hang out a little bit. Well, it was a very popular area. And so they could see from a little distance, hey, is that, that's Jesus, see? That's the guy. Who, and so you can imagine people were thrilled this guy was coming back into their region. It's as if they've been waiting for the great miracle worker to return. They see him coming back and they can't wait for him. And, and the, this is the guy who does all the healing and the guy who does all those great miracles. And he's come back. And so therefore, the Bible tells us there were great multitudes that were there and they gathered very quickly seemingly as he stepped right out of the boat their people were there to greet him i mean jesus is to the point now where he can't hide and his people just know everywhere he goes and everywhere he goes there's crowds and so he's still there by the sea and all these people are rushing him and you can imagine i mean everybody who has any kind of illness anyone who loves someone who has an illness this guy, they, they can't wait for him to be here, and he's back. And that's exactly what happens. And one of the people that was in that great multitude, one of the people that was in that great multitude that saw him coming up on the seashore, he was, his name was Jarius, and he was a leader in the Jewish synagogue there in the area. Jarius was a leader of the synagogue, and he had a very sick little daughter. And, I mean, very sick. And we're not talking about the flu or a cold or, <coughs> okay, when, this is sick. I mean, on her deathbed, this small girl was, was about to die. That's how sick, sick that she was. And so he's relaying this information. As soon as Jesus stepped off the boat, he's there going, hey, my little girl is about to die. Will you come and help? And what does Jesus say? 
let's go. Show me where she's at. Tell me where she's at and let's go. And so that is the situation here. And so as soon as he tells Jerry, let's go, they start marching to Jerry's house. And he's going to take care of this girl. And he has this whole crowd of people that they know what he's done in the past. And they can't wait to see the new miracle that's about to happen. So, <coughs> so he has this <coughs> great multitude of people that are following that, that just want to see this. And so he's just walking with this multitude behind him, following him to see this great miracle. And as they're doing this journey, before they get to the house of Jairus, this, the, this is the story that we're going to look at today. Remember, this is not, this woman that we're going to talk about today, this is not what he's traveling for. He's traveling to heal the daughter of Jairus. And this whole thing is almost sort of a sidetrack. He gets kind of sidetracked on the mission. And this is what happens. Let's look at Mark chapter 5 together, looking at verses 25 through 26. It says, And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. Now, folks, this what a terrible disease this is. I mean, I don't even know what kind of medical condition she had, but that's pretty terrible. OK, this woman is in a very desperate condition. Now, that would be an awful thing to have now. But then it's even worse because her medical issue left her constantly ceremonially, you know, spiritually unclean. We, you remember the, all the Old Testament laws about the women and when they had their time of bleeding and all, how it made them unclean and all the rituals there. Well, she's constantly every day considered unclean. She could never be clean. And so therefore, spiritually, she was a pariah. Socially, it, it's bad enough socially that you can imagine, but spiritually so. She was declared unclean, and she could never do anything to ceremonially to become clean because she was, this was a constant problem. So what a medical condition. I, I feel for this woman. She was lonely and isolated for 12 years. According to the law in Leviticus chapter 15, verse 19 through 31, if she were to touch anyone, if she were to touch, you know, bump into someone or whatever, that person would now be considered unclean. And so you can imagine if this medical condition, she couldn't, she couldn't live with her family anymore. She couldn't be with her children. She couldn't be in the household. She couldn't be around people because what if she accidentally touched somebody? Then now they're unclean. And this is an everyday issue for this woman. So she's living a terrible life. By law, by Jewish law, she would have had to be divorced from her husband if she had one. We don't even know that she had one, but, but by law, if she had a husband, she would have had to have been divorced because he couldn't be with her through this. Now, she could not live in her home with her children if she had some. We don't know, but we know for sure she was ostracized by society. She was like a leper. I mean, she had to just go away and be isolated, not around anyone. She couldn't contact old friends or family for support. Can you imagine having a medical condition? It's not your fault. You have a medical condition where everyone now has to get away from you. You have no socialization. Family, friends, everyone has to depart from away from you. You live in complete isolation you i mean at least the lepers had other lepers they could hang with right they had a colony of lepers they could hang with she she didn't want leprosy she couldn't hang out with the lepers she couldn't hang out with anybody she's all by herself that's a sad existence and for 12 years folks many of us were going crazy just being alone during covid that wasn't 12 years long Imagine being lonely and isolated, not having any family or friends for 12 years. That's what this woman had to go through. She was excommunicated from the synagogue. In other words, she was unable to worship. She couldn't offer sacrifices for her sins. 
She was shut out of the court of women from the temple. She couldn't go and do anything. She couldn't go to the markets and, and make sacrifices. She, she wasn't allowed in the city limits. This woman had a terrible life, a terrible existence. She spent all she had, everything she had, everything she owned, she spent trying desperately to get doctors to cure her of this medical condition. No doctor was able to do anything. And now she's broke. She doesn't have a penny to her name. She spent it all. It's all gone. And she has no way of making any kind of money. And she still has the condition. And the Bible tells us all the doctor's work, all it did was make it worse. It didn't even get better. You know, how many times you've been sick and a doctor gives you some pills and you get better for a little while, but then it comes roaring back. She didn't, it just got worse, whatever the doctors did. And that's what this woman's condition was like. Look at verse 27 through 28. It says, when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd <coughs> and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Wow. What an amazing faith. What an amazing hope this woman has. To know this guy has so much power, I don't even have to touch him. If I just touch the clothes, that then I'm going to be healed. That's the kind of power this guy has. This woman knows Jesus is here. He's arrived. He's here. That's what this multitude is about. He, she knows this is my only chance. Doctors can't do anything about it. I've hired the best of the best. I'm broke and penniless. I can't even hire another doctor if I wanted to. They can't do anything for me. Here's my last chance, and I know he can do it. And she has this super embarrassing condition. She, she knows, everyone knows her around the town, and so she's got to find a way. She's got to scheme herself. I mean, she's got to figure out, how do I get to this guy? How do I get to this guy to where I can brush up against his clothes? I'm socially and religiously ostracized. If I touch anyone, they are considered unclean. So I can't just come out and say, Jesus, and run up and grab them. I can't do that. I can't run up and touch them. And so what does she do? She says, no one wants me to be around. I'm going to have to sneak it. I'm going to have to go ninja mode, okay? Going to have to put on the, 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 the thing over my face. Going to have to hide. Going to have to pretend and, and sneak around the crowd and kind of but get close enough and just hit, just kind of just touches him real quick. And, and got to blend in, right? I got to hide and blend in, sneak around, get a little touch, and then I can scurry away. And no one will notice. No one will know the bleeding woman did this. No one will know this guy is unclean. No one's going to go anything. But I'll get my healing. What a desperate woman. What a sad situation. And she says, I can't let anyone know I made contact with the healer. But I'm, that's what I need to do. I can't let the healer know. Because what's going to happen? If I touch the guy, this guy, what's going to happen? He's going to be like, hey. Hey, you made me unclean. And she, he's going to embarrass me in front of everybody, and then I'll be in trouble. I will broke all these laws. They may even put me to death. <clears throat> so I have to just brush against the hem of her, his clothes, and that'll be enough. That'll be enough. There's so much power with this guy. That's enough power. If, if I'm just touching him, if they are touching, then they will have the power. If, if his clothes are touching Jesus then his clothes will have the power. So if I just kind of brush a little bit, he won't feel it, and I can get away. Look at Mark 5, 29. It says, Immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. The woman went ninja mode, hiding, sneaking, blending, Going through all the crowd, snaking around. You, you know how to get through a crowd, right? Going through all, weaving. And then she gets to him and she makes her plan and it works. And she felt it. She felt that it had been, she could tell, I'm, not, I'm done. 
She's instantly healed, folks, and she knew it. She knew it in her mind. She knew it in her body. She knew everything. She felt the healing, and I love the word that NIV uses here. And it says there was a psychological freeing that took place. Have you ever seen someone that gets granted freedom? This woman was, had been in a horrible, isolated prison for 12 years. And she knows that she's free now. She knows in an instant, this, it worked. I'm free from this. You can imagine her, her, her excitement. I'm going to get to see my family. I'm, I'm going to be healed. And now I, I, I'm going to be able to see my loved ones. I can call up my old friends again. I can see, all, I, I, I can see everybody I've been wanting to. I can live life again. I don't have to be lonely anymore. <clears throat> After 12 years, 12 years of being alone and treated worse than a dog, it's over. I have freedom because of this man. She knew it instantly. She knew she was free. So now her plan is, what? Let me sneak off quietly. Nobody knows. Great plan. Then in her, I imagine, imagine her mind is, let me, let me hang out a week or so. Let all the multitude die down. And then I'll just go to the temple leaders. I'll go to the spiritual priests. I'll go to the doctors. i got to get the doctors to say, this woman's been healed. She's no longer having this issue. Then I can go and do my seven days of ceremonial rituals. And then I can present myself. To, and everyone, basically, it may take a month or so, but man, it, I'm going to be free. So let me sneak away and start the process of being declared clean. The plan worked. But uh-oh. One little problem fell in her plan. Let's read verse 30. At once, Jesus realized the power had gone out from him. He turned around to the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? Uh-oh. Can you imagine the sinking feeling this woman just had? She, she, she felt, she knows all oh, the freedom. Now all I have to do is sneak off. No one will know. But Jesus, he says, hey, who touched my clothes out there? Now, Jesus, at the, he knew instantly. Now, it's not like you can sneak a miracle from God, right? Just as the woman knew it instantly, Jesus knew it instantly too. Just as she felt it in her body, Jesus did too. <clears throat> and so Jesus says, who touched my clothes? Now, think about the woman hearing this question. Uh-oh, I'm busted. I can't sneak away from this. I broke laws. <laughs> and he just outed me in front of everybody. Everyone's going to know. They're going to take my little hood off. They're going to take my veil off. Man, I'm going to be busted. Now they're going to send me to death probably. I can't sneak away. I just made him unclean. He's, he's heading off to Jairus' house to heal the daughter. Now he probably can't do it because now I made him unclean. That's the way everyone's going to look at this. I just ruined everybody's party. The whole multitude well, couldn't wait to get to Jairus' house to heal the girl. I just spoiled it all. I'm going to cause a riot. They're all going to stone me right here and now. That's got to be what she's thinking. Imagine the embarrassment that Jesus just caused this lady. Imagine the fear that she must have had. Imagine the roller coaster of emotions. I'm free. Uh oh. I'm free. I'm healed. I can't wait. Oh no. He found out. Can you imagine being on such a high and then boom, such a low? That's exactly what this woman is going through. <clears throat> I'm going to be punished for this. Jesus knew who touched him. Never in the history of mankind has anyone stolen a miracle from God that he did not want to give. I think that's an important part of this lesson, too. She didn't steal a lesson from him. Jesus wanted her to be healed. Jesus willingly gave this miracle to her. I think that is very crucial. Jesus, omniscient, knows all. He knew the woman was there. He knew her plan, and yet he gave her the healing anyway. It was by choice. She didn't steal it from him. 
Jesus healed this woman on purpose. He knew what he was going to do the whole time. I bet he knew getting out of the boat. This woman's going to come up as I'm walking to Jerry's house. She's going to touch me. And he knew what was going on. So why did he ask the question? Why did he say, who touched my clothes? He knew way beforehand who, touched, who was going to touch his clothes and the reason why. He's God. He has incredible knowledge. that we don't, And he knows all of that. So why would he say, who touched my clothes? Like he doesn't know. Look at verse 31. It says, You see the people crowding against you. His disciples answered, and you can ask, Who touched me? I love this. His disciples are like, Are you kidding? In this crowd? A thousand people. Just pick somebody. That's who touched you, Jesus. Are you kidding me? That, that's what the disciples had to be thinking. There's such a crowd. You're trying to single out somebody? Everybody's touching you. There are hundreds of people that could have been touching you. You want to single out one person? Take your pick, Jesus. You can imagine the, the, the disciples' reaction. What are you talking about who touched your clothes? Everybody is. Look at 32 and 33. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembled with fear, told him the whole truth. Jesus is amazing in this little story. He knew the who and the what. And yet he's going through some kind of weird little charade, right? Like, who touched me? I wonder, oh, who did that? And he's, he, he knew who. Why is he doing this? <clears throat> he verbally shouted out to everybody, even the disciples heard. He didn't just think to himself, who touched my clothes? He knew. He said, who touched my clothes? And let everybody know. And then he starts doing this thing where he's like searching. Who did it? Was, you know, I don't know. He's looking around. Why is he going through this little charade when he knows who? It's because he didn't want to out the woman. He didn't want to say, hey, look, I know you did it. He didn't want to out her. He didn't want to throw her under the bus. Because then what would it, like said, the whole mob would have been like, you are clean. You are. He didn't want to do that. His purpose was not to embarrass the woman. His purpose was not to humiliate her in any way. On the contrary, he wanted to make everything better that minute. If she was willing, if she willingly came forward and outed herself, then Jesus could fix everything right in that moment. Jesus could publicly make it known, this woman's been healed, she's clean, everyone accept her now. That's the whole thing. But it had to be her choice. When he says, who touched my clothes? He's giving her a chance to confess. She needed to, it, all of her plan was to be sneaky and, and, and sneak behind everybody and not, not let anybody know. She had faith. She had faith that this guy was going to be able to heal. But she didn't want anybody to know her plans. Didn't want anybody to know what was going on in her life. She was going to sneak by and steal it, and no one would know. And Jesus is saying, that's not the way it works. Jesus said, you come to me. You confess with your own mouth. You have to let everybody know. There's a public confession that has to happen. You come to me. You have to let everybody know that you believe in me. And then I'll give you instant freedom when you do. Not a week later. Not a month later, not several days down the road. Let's, Jesus said, I want to get her fixed physically, mentally, and spiritually right now. Let's get her back with her family today. Not a month later as the doctors get approval and the spiritual leaders give the approval and after ceremony. No, no, no. Let's get it done right now. So Jesus is doing this. He's, when he says, who touched my clothes? He's saying, I'm offering you a chance to get everything fixed right now, but you have to confess what's really going on. That's what he said in that beautiful question. But it has to be her choice. Jesus wants to help her right now. Who knows what would happen? Maybe in a week, she'd present herself and the doctors, the temple leaders, maybe they wouldn't have believed her. Maybe they would have said, well, I don't this is weird. We don't we didn't do anything. 
we're not going to call, we're not going to say you're clean. You know, we don't know what the other people would have done. We don't even know if her plan would have worked, but Jesus' plan always works. Maybe they were going to make her wait an extra month or two just to be sure. Well, let's make, let's make sure you're fully healed. We're not going to declare you clean until we know this is gone. Let's wait three, four months to make sure it's real. Can you imagine? We don't know what would have happened. So Jesus said, I'm giving you an opportunity to fix it now. But in order for it to be, you have to confess. Let's get it all fixed right now. But first, you have to make a public confession. And we're not going to coerce it. He could have pointed her out. He could have said, you, I know you're the one that, that did that. You touched me. I know it was. But he didn't want to do that. He wanted to protect her in every way. He wanted it to be her choice. It had to be her choice. Look at Mark 5.34. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. <coughs> She came, she kneeled, she confessed. She said, I did it. And what does Jesus do in front of the whole multitude? The whole multitude and the whole crowd, he declares this woman to be clean. He says, look, everybody that's here, this whole multitude. She came, she knelt, she said, I did it. And because she has confessed, and she did it in her faith, he said, because of her faith, she has been healed and is now clean she's freed now all the whole crowd knows and now the whole crowd has to accept also the crowd knows what healed her it wasn't the clothes it never was about the clothes jesus didn't say because she touched my powerful clothes no he declared it because of your faith it wasn't because of my clothes. It was because of your faith. You have been healed. It wasn't the main thing about the magic clothes. And Jesus healed her because of the faith. Jesus did in an instant what no doctor was able to accomplish in 12 years in all of her savings. Jesus did for free what she spent her life savings trying to chase. And you know what else? Jesus was not unclean. Do you realize that? Remember, the law says if someone unclean touches a clean, now that person who's unclean becomes unclean. Well, now the complete opposite happened. He healed her. He made her clean. She didn't make him unclean. He made her clean. He made her whole. He fixed her entire life. And how did it all happen? Because she answered the question honestly, who touched my clothes? She was, she heard the question and had a choice. I can confess and come clean. Or I can try to sneak away and handle this myself. She had a choice there. And that's what the question means. You have a choice. Are you going to come to me and confess? And are you going to open your life and lay it bare before me and let me heal you? Or are you going to continue to do it your way? Well, she did it. She confessed. She could have just kept sneaking off. She could have ignored the question completely. But she was pretending to search as if he didn't know. Jesus was, was allowing this situation. He was pretending he didn't know. She could have snuck off. Allowing her to escape if that's what she wanted to choose. So the question, who touched my clothes? It was a chance to be honest and receive a full healing. It was a chance for the woman to come clean, bring her life to Jesus openly, honestly, and not hide anymore. Folks, that question is for you today. That same question, the spirit of the question is for you. Jesus says, I can heal you. I can heal your broken life. But you're not going to hide. Come forward. Confess your life. Open up your life. And man, I'll give you healing you won't believe. Jesus wants you to ponder this question today. Jesus wants that question to prod you. To think of the same thing that made that woman today. What do I need to confess in my life to get healing? 
Jesus wants you to do what you think might be embarrassing today. She could have said, no, this is too embarrassing. I'll be out in front. Nope, I'm just going to sneak off. You have the same option today. There are people here that right now, they need to confess things in their life, but they're just going to sit in the pew and not do anything. That's going to be their choice. And what a sad choice. Because Jesus says, if you just come and confess and be open and honest, I'll heal you in massive ways. This isn't about embarrassing you. It's about calling you to a higher purpose. If you're willing to be low, I'll lift you up. That's what this is about. He's asking you to come forth in public and open and honest confession. To confess your faith in Romans 10, 9 through 10. What does it say? If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Confession. You can't hide it in your heart. You can't just say, I'm not going to let anybody know that I believe. And then I'll get baptized when no one's looking. And then it'll just be between me and God. And I'll, have, I'll personally be saved, but no one else will know. It's not what God said. God said, you have to be willing to declare it with your mouth in a public and open way. You have to confess it. He's asking you to come forth right now to confess your faith. <clears throat> Look at uh, James. I have the wrong heading up there. In James, it says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and to pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. You want healing, what's part of it? Confession. You have to confess. So he's asking you today to confess your faith. And to confess your sins. And he says, I will heal you. I'll give you freedom. He's not going to force you. He's not going to coerce you. It's 100% your choice. So the question that you need to ask yourself is, where you, are you going to be willing to be open and honest with your life before Christ? Sins and all to accept his healing. You can be free today. You can be healed instantly, just like that woman. If you'll just be open and honest, will you publicly admit to touching his clothes? That is the lesson for you this morning. If there's one here, anyone here with any kind of need, you can let it be known. Uh, we will have an elder down front who will be willing to accept you if you have anything you want to talk about in a public way. If you want to talk in a private way, there will be someone in the back to accept you and help you out there. Whatever your need is, come forward as we stand, as we sing today. <clears throat> what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus for my pardon this I see nothing but the blood of Jesus for my cleansing this my plea nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus, not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood <coughs> Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. You may be seated. Wow, church. Mm. Wow. What a powerful sermon. I was just telling Brother, Sir, Brother uh, Stan, good message. Wow. Mm. Confession. But faith, the power, the power of that woman's faith. And I was drawn to Matthew chapter 17, uh, verse, 20, uh, verse 20 and 21, where the disciples couldn't uh, cast out that demon because they didn't have faith and they were with Jesus all that time and they didn't have the faith uh, and the, Jesus chastised them and faith the size of a mustard seed you know how big a mustard seed is church family a millimeter but yet it can grow to the size of a, a 30 foot tree wow faith power of faith mm, praise God for faith I have some uh, prayer requests here. Cliff and Julie uh, asked for prayers for their grandson, Jose Aurelio. Um, Areola. Areola. Uh, he was in a serious motorcycle accident, uh, and he suffered fractures to his neck, back, and arm and he'll be having surgery today and tomorrow. So we're certainly gonna lift him up in prayer. And Brother J.D. asked for prayers for Sue Carr, who is suffering from back and leg pain and is gonna have an MRI. So let's pray for those individuals right now. Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer thanking you for the power that you have, the power that Jesus has to heal us to help us. And Lord, we lift up Jose. Lord, we pray that the surgery goes well, that, that the, uh, his body can be repaired uh, from those fractures. And Lord, we're thankful that he survived the accident. Amen. Lord, he survived to be repaired. So we're so thankful. And so we pray that you guide the doctors and the medical staff that will be tending to him that they do their best and that the surgery is successful and we can give you all the praise and, and glory and honor for that accomplishment. And Lord, we also lift up Sue, who is suffering from back and leg pain. Lord, we all have aches and pains, uh, no matter what our age, whether it's from a, a fall and a scrape or just from a debilitating disease. And Lord, we know you're able, this woman uh, that was part of the sermon story with the bleeding. She suffered for 12 years and just her strength of her faith, knowing that if she just touched the cloak of Jesus, the power of faith, the power of our faith and the public confession, uh, giving you credit, honoring and, and, and giving you the 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 glory for the accomplishment. Uh, we can't do it on our own. And so we thank you, Lord. So we lift up these two individuals and pray that your will be done with them. These things I ask in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Uh, so I uh, have some things to share with you. A thank you card from Sister uh, Deborah uh, Darby. Um, she says, thank you to my church family I would just like to say thank you for your continued prayers during my illness with COVID and the secondary infection that she had developed from it. She says, thank you to my sisters in Christ for the phone calls to check on me 
and offering their assistance if needed. I'm truly blessed to belong to a wonderful congregation, Sister Deborah Darby. And Deborah, where, where are you at? There you are. We're thankful that you're a part of our congregation. You're a wonderful part of it too. So um, praise God that um, you're better. Yep. yep. And let's see here. We have some upcoming events, Dessert by Candlelight. If you haven't signed up uh, or volunteered to, um, to bring a dish, please do. So on December 16th, the 20th, the closing closet is open from one to three. The office will be closed on the 25th. And uh, December 31st, uh, fifth Sunday, potluck and singing. Uh, so if there's nothing else to be shared. If you all that are able that can stand, will you please stand and I'll pray us out. Hmm. Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer thanking you for blessing us with a wonderful worship service, uh, sing praises to you and be thankful for faith, to be thankful for Jesus, uh, to be thankful to be here, uh, to do all this and thank you for the fellowship of, of those believers here and visitors. Lord, well, watch over us as we're dismissed. Uh, we ask for prayers for those that, that are sick and couldn't be with us, that, that you would heal them if it be thy will, comfort and strengthen them. For those that are mourning and have suffered uh, the loss of a loved one, comfort and strengthen them. And Lord, just protect us from the evil one. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in this world that are not good. But also, Lord, there's a large amount of things that are good and, and we're thankful for the good in the world and for the blessings that you bring to us lord so till our next appointed time watch over us keep us safe and we just thank you lord these things i ask in jesus christ's name amen Thanks.